Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, welcome to another exciting another one's propaganda cast from your host, Imperial Dane. A one versus one on Nagroskaya again. Yes, indeed. But by the way, this has been recorded a few days in advance, so this is pretty much just after the patch is out, and I've only got a few replays. I'm heading off for the weekend, and such. I thus I always record the episodes in advance. So for you, there won't be any difference. But for me, again, I have to work with what I have. On one side, we're going to see Major Onitz fighting for the Germans for the 11th Panzer Division here, supplemented by Ostroppen, rushing ahead to take some points. Ostrom Doctrine, obviously, all then us already chosen. Opposing him shall be Omadun of the Soviet Union of the 15th Tank Corps. Points being taken, conscripts advancing. And obviously, right here, we're seeing that Major Onitz is sort of aiming to grab a lot of territory initially with two Pioneer Squads and one squad of Ostroppen. A few Hilfswilliger. Forced out at gunpoint and taken out to take some points. <laughs> and of course, remember, only in Cow did actually gain a sort of decent amount of damage done. And of course, remember now, with the latest patch, they actually take territory a bit slower, I believe, so that is also something to keep in mind. They're going to be reasonably less effective at taking points. And generally, again, you want some larger numbers of them working together. One squad and it's only going to be of very, very limited combat value. So that is important to remember, ladies and gentlemen. So player taking a nice amount of ground. German player though also gaining a nice chunk already here having teched up. Banger going out here to cover the few points. You found something? I suppose you have was totally sticking right. Conscripts moving left. Nothing here to cover the Ostrom. Of course, they still can't lay down a trench. There's nothing here to help protect them that way. Conscripts moving in. Ostrom out in the open. Oh, well, there's a bit of light cover there. They probably should have pulled back towards that. And so far, I mean, clearly the Ostrom are not the main part of this sort of strategy that Major Onich is playing at. It's more about grabbing territory, likely rushing for something. In this case, it's a tier 2 rush. Utilizing the Ost Enemy forces are securing our territory. So I imagine we'll soon be seeing the like to make a nice company up. There we go. Well Ostrom are going be. to need some reinforcements. Has been it looks off. like we might see Majonis going here for the cutoff point. Ready of course, unaware well there is Soviet infantry lingering nearby. And what sort of doctrines has he gone for? What oh, has he available? Got motor, got rifles, shot rifles are pretty much the bog standard for the Soviets. Combat engineers and conscripts advancing. And then got Ostrom coming in and fight again. Cover, cover, Entdeckung, Menel. Entdeckung. There we go. Like to make a nice company up. You might be seeing some Panzer Grenadier, I suppose. There's so far nothing. Indicating the sort. Ostrom here fighting again. Out in the open again. They pretty much end up doing very little. You want them in cover. I emphasis and stress you want them in cover. Pioneers ready for anything. Machine gun bunker managed to throw back the Soviet invaders in the west. Pioneers ready for anything. Where did the hell that sound come from? Oh. Anyways, conscripts moving out. Combat is in move. Pioneers moving up the right side. And there you go, yes. the first squad of Panzer Grenadiere have arrived. We're seeing a support weapon company up here for Omadon. Points here being secured. Panzer Grenadiers! Pioneers awaiting orders. The enemy is attempting to steal our sector! It's advancing yeah. bravely and swiftly, all but at the same time losing the West, which is considerably less good. You need something the score of Panzer Grenadiers might want to be considered lobbed at the enemy as a solution. We have the objective. And it's we're seeing here, in fact, that Ormodon is rushing straight on for Tank Reaper Tank Command, perhaps being sensed what is going on here. He's going to take advantage of this. He knows he's going to hit with something in terms of heavier infantry. Standing His by. response? Hit them with tanks. Also, good aggressive mining there going on from Omadon. 
Oz Torben caught out in the open again. Cover, cover. Again, they pretty much do nothing out in the open. It is surprising to see how many players are actually use Oz Torben seem to forget this very particular rule about them. Honey is engaged by a large force of conscripts. And there we go. Forced away, caught on the fire of the machine gun and the Panzer Swiss. He's ready for the cutoff point, a desperate attempt to cut off German fuel. And he definitely needs to consider some anti tank. Of course, he doesn't know. He does it, but he probably should, anyways. But definitely is going to get hit very hard in the bollocks with his weakness if he's not careful. But there you go. Very aggressive play going on here from Major Onis at the same time as having a little trouble holding the map. Scout car on the way. Like tip Hancho Spear Bargain. But reconnaissance. Enemy contact! One of many reconnaissance vehicles used by the Germans of the armored car kind, anyways. Bikes and the likes were of course also used by some units and of course Volkswagen, Kugelwagen for this and Schwimmwagens depending more specifically on the purpose of the Connors' unit type since there was usually be sort of two types even then on the Connors' infantry some sort of more specific in fighting others for more scouting specific purposes there we go Panzer is catching the Connors' right here Strong Gears might end them right there oh Omadon, oh Omadon oh yet and there we go wiped out to a man scout cover rushes ahead I said rushes ahead doesn't take a picnic up but there will apparently not Panzer is going force away call on the open bunt grenade does something but ultimately not enough in the face of Soviet power pioneers reporting objective captured Flemenwerfer troops getting pushed back First command point available, of course, thus trenches and officers. I would definitely recommend him getting the field officer to support his panzer grenadiers. That would definitely be a nice move. Of course, also get him some more field units. And of course, he might also want to consider actually using his Ostropen for reinforce to set up some trenches and dig in at some vital points. That could prove to be quite handy. Meanwhile, though, we will see Major Onishi applying his scout car very aggressively towards his opponent. Heavy mortar, thus, we know it's scout motor here for Oberdon. Very bold move here, but this conscript's barely alive, taking a point rather close to the enemy's front line. Ready. Pack on the way. I suppose you have orders. Not bad thinking yeah. there. Oswald, though, should get reinforced. And there we go, the T-70 has arrived. We have liberated the objective. Here. There we go, Ostrom reinforced. Pioneers are going to get rushed, T-70 moves in, Pioneers coming under fire, and there you go, losses inflicted, Pack arrives, Panzer up there, Kanone, bereit. Heavy mortar fires away as well. He might want to consider actually upgrading his scout car with the auto cannon to help a bit here against the T-70, blast a bit from a safe distance. T-70 rolling ahead, unaware so the pack is awaiting it. And can't see it, apparently. A bit anticlimactic. Quickly moving on to a second pack, interestingly enough. A second pack. Going to get very heavy on the anti-tank defense department. There we go, engaging the bunker. Shall the response from Major only to be ruthless and harsh and swift? But what shall it be? There we go, Comet is getting engaged here with the scout car and the Panzer it is. Looks like one squad of Comets could get wiped out and oh there we go. Packs are moving up, trying to get that T-70 mortars raining down on the Panzer Grenadier. And there we go, actually heavy mortar spotted, he marked it again, move up the Osthofen, into cover, engage the bloody thing. Instead, direct hit right there, 
Wiping out more than half the squad, leaving a lot of Eastern Europeans dead. Pioneers ready for anything! More heavy mortar fire. We're actually seeing here that Ormodon is actually quite low on units at the moment, in particular in comparison to Major Onix, but can Major Onix be actually be aware of this and can he leverage this in the correct manner? Popping over though here. Bunker going up, line going to be a medic bunker. Again, upgrading this might prove advantageous in trying to deal with this T-70, which is currently being self-repaired. Pioneers advancing up straight here, spotting the enemy's positions. A nice flank here could prove to be quite nice. And again, I think he should perhaps focus in small assault here, dealing that heavy mortar quickly. T-34 on the way, T-34. Panzergun is peeking ahead straight out too far there, getting punished by the T-70. Mortars firing down, close to wiping out that pack instead. Shatters boxes. Damn those fascist boxes. Oh, T-70 moves in. Pokes its head too far. Takes a nasty hit right there from the pack. Up close. T-34 is soon ready. And there we go, Ostrom Martin or Pioneers actually being shifted over to the right flank to take points there. Bunker not upgraded. Might be a need to pull back the scout car, get it repaired. And certainly I think squad. that Major Onis should consider investing in a third squad of Panzergrenadier or some more Ostrom, some Order more infantry. Anyways. Since he's currently got an awful little infantry, he needs to get even less, got even less to actually support it. Which could prove to be a major problem, Flame since he's actually facing a more combined armed force with tanks, infantry, and support weapons for said infantry. There we go, Bunker going to get cleared out here by the T-34. Well, it looks like he's actually decided to dig in around here instead of trying to break out into new advantage again. Very open up here if Major Onis was to shift his path. Make a wreck around here could actually force away the mortar quite nicely. Instead, he seems to have dug in around here and he can't actually defend his pack due to the, or bunch due to the territory right here, which actually makes it very difficult for him to utilize his packs. So nicely handled right there by Ormadon. Managed to negate the effect of the packs. All units are here. And some guards infantry arriving. This territory is ours. T-34, crude, loaded and ready. And a support armor caught up there. Your orders, comrade. And now we see Ormadon continuing to advance ruthlessly for the motherland. Under the Guiding aegis of the heavy mortar. Guarding the following up might be an idea to get them some uh, light machine guns. Major Onich needs to regroup, get troops in force and get back in the fight. Definitely needs these panzer grenadiers now equipped with the rocket and panzer troops already. Wants a decent chance. It is now under our control. Of course, at the current moment, a Stug or a Panzer IV would probably be the best choice. Scout car here though, can hit. No packs nearby to support. Ostrom didn't even bother Panzer Fausting. That definitely looks going to be a loss for the scout car. Bit of a silly loss. Looks like Major Onich has gotten completely shocked or something. Falling utterly on the defensive. There we go, perhaps the tool of his salvation has arrived, the Panzerkampfwagenfeer. And mines going up there, constant aggressive mining, lovely, lovely. More heavy mortar fire, troops advancing, Panzers advancing. Enemy forces capturing supply sector. A direct assault up here at the center. I would have liked to see those Panzers more fully reinforced, but I suppose you can't have everything. There we go, heavy mortar engaged. Pioneers being engaged here for the tanks in return. No machine gun upgrade, by the way, for the Panzer IV. Bit of a mistake there. This is a sad mistake. We are awaiting the sad contact. decision. In the mod, West utterly falling. Very aggressive push here, but doesn't really seem to take account on the rest of Ormadon's forces. 
And actually leaving a flank that explosion looks like another Ostrom squad has been rushed out to take some more ground. Enemy forces are neutralizing a sector. Might be a need to get these chaps into a house to provide them some protection. Now go T-34. Getting blasted and rather than us even taking a hit there from the pack. Mark Beagle up, hands for advancing. Looks like that T-34 has seen its last sunrise. There we go, a direct hit, cooking up the entire thing. Nice use there of actually off capture mode, or secure mode here for the T-78 to take away points. And Razin using it, hands for his hits, getting caught directly in a Soviet advance, taking some nasty losses. Panzer 4 needs to pull up here to start the advance. Clearly that T-70 is going to escape, it's rather more important to stop the infantry from advancing too much further, not throwing his lines further into havoc. There we go. Pack sneaking ahead. Ostrom here almost wiped out, the T-70 continues the reign of terror. And there we go, damage, Engine cut the pack, get it, call the Panzer for now. Realising what the situation is, rush in and finish off in this wretched piece of Soviet scrap metal. Mortar rounds going down here. 13 kills, two friendlies. And there we go, T-70 blown to bits. And overall, all Madan's infantry forces are a bit battered here. So if Major Onis rushes to quickly get a move on, a major move on, in fact, he might be able to quickly turn the tide in a more permanent manner. Enemy forces are attempting to capture our territory. I would also still like to see him utilize the field officer to boost his troops Squad even further. Engineer standing by. Mortar ready for order. At this current stage, Ormadon could consider getting a field gun to help deal with the Panzer Fall, of course, get some barrages down on the packs. If that is what he wants to do. He needs to be careful with the pants for that close up to the front. Now we go quickly buttoned. He should have kept it nearby some infantry to the support. Ostrom getting into cover. No, they can actually get out of it. He very four moving in. Panzer 4 needs to pull back, pull back, pull back. Getting anti-tank grenade, getting shot at. Come on, get the Panzer 4 out of there. Anti-tank grenades on the rear of the Panzer can fucking clear. Ostrom taking heavy losses, still no utilization of cover. And there go another Panzer squad advancing. Might get off their Panzer 6. Panzer 4 though did go down. Could have been handled better. Could have been handled better. More heavy mortar fire clearing out the pack crew. Territory. And once more heavy losses to Ormadon, but this time he was able to inflict some more severe one on his opponent. Just continue all this Ostrobin wiped out. Keep moving, watch. Stay low. And there you go, Panzergun is quickly and slowly counter-attacking. And alone Ostrofen, the survivor of this squad, shattered on the west of Landraskea. More T-34s arriving, looks like Ormadon is a huge fan of the T-34s. He could consider saving up for a pair of T-34-85s, something a bit bigger in terms of guns. Nice move there, actually setting up a minefield in the middle of everything. It's an s Panzer is making a bold move straight into everything and getting punished for it. No deep surprises there. Pioneers might want to stop mining. Don't mine. Don't mine in front of the enemy when you can see it. And the Panzer is well retreated. Too late, I'm afraid. But there we go. Minefield up. Already bits are getting set off though. Another Panzer IV arriving. Quickly. Schnell. Schnell. Although I think a Stroop would have been better. Better range to help deal with the T-34s and of course. Higher rate of fire. Conscripts just marching through the S mines, getting lost to the tiny bouncing mines, delivering shrapnel and German goodness throughout their bodies. And by German goodness, I mean 
gun and munitions. You have orders? We are awaiting orders. The situation here is a bit nasty. Pack quickly getting a food in right in front of the Germans. Looks like they might get cleared out. And there we go. We have been this is our Enemy infantry have made the ultimate sacrifice. And looks like a squad. Bit the dust. Pack needs to stop up. And again, target weak point here would be a good move. Stun the T-34, making a very nice, easy target. It seems to not be necessary. T-34 went down. Now they just need to wreck it. Okay, it's really forced. And four. Oh no! Don't retreat! 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 Pull back the Panzer IV as well. And again, I would suggest shooting the T-34, finishing it off, ensuring that the Soviet player can't get it. Oh dear, oh dear, don't move ahead of the Panzer IV when it's smart. Don't move ahead of the Panzer IV when it's smart. Nine. Veteran the two there, and there we go. Panzer IV went down, that was a bit silly. Still no infantry support. And there we go, T-34 recruit. Bit of a bollock stock battle there from Major Onich. And the to cash up here for Ormadon, although I'm mean, curious as to why I didn't choose this bomb, but this one which is a considerably more exposed. Shoots in here! Pack, who is ready? Keep coming! Pioneer squad! A bit of quiet heavy mortar continues to present a bit of a problem. Quiet here. Standing by. And we are seeing here that Major Onyx is desperately low on in infantry. There we go, more panzer gunners. I would strongly suggest getting a strong push out. Getting it upgraded. Territory. He's barely been upgrading any of his machine guns, in fact. And looks like a railway artillery support gets ready. The Schwer Gustav unleashing its artillery on the heavy mortar. Oh, almost getting it! Almost getting it! Except Paul Vasily, who's had his eardrums blasted out. And pretty much everything else out as well. And somehow still clings on to life. Howard's Immortal, though, escaped the wrath of the Fatherland, for now, anyways. More mines over here, by the looks of it. Putting another stop to the Soviet advances. There we go. Good job laying down S mines here. Another Panzer form the way. Another one. I do think a Stuka might have been better. And there goes Swift counter attack by the Panzer. This saves the West. For the time being, overall, he's actually making some progress. He's still holding on. So while he's making some mistakes, I mean, he's still obviously doing something right. He's still delivering some serious damage to his opponent. And the S-Mines definitely are good. So rarely seen actually used by German players. T-34 Swift going through the minefield, setting it all off with pretty much no damage to itself suffered. Another Panzerkampfwagenfeer. Bereit for the effect. And time for the mid-game analysis. Counter situation is that Major Onich is holding most of the map. On the other hand, he's suffering some slightly unfortunate losses. Rasa repeatedly, he seems to have a tendency of rather extending himself, getting a bit too aggressive, or in some cases just doing things which seem a bit inexplicable. So it might just be, of course, that he's rather a risk taker, but one without necessarily fully understanding his risks at times. We are seeing here that Ormadon is finding him. He's actually taking some damage again. I mean, it's not like Major Onich is completely fumbling around like a novice in a closet completely dark but you know there's clearly something going on but at the same time I can't help but feel that some of the premises he's working on are perhaps a bit flawed again particularly the one how he utilizes his Osthofen clearly displays a flawed understanding that's another discussion still doing a lot of damage to Omodon, Omodon actually suffering quite a bit 
though Ormadon is obviously doing a lot of damage in return, but he needs to do with this building on more coherent force. And he's in part, you know, doing that. I mean, he's already got three T-34s, which is actually quite a bit of firepower, considering, you know, if you compare to what major on his hands, he can actually overwhelm just through sheer armor, if utilized properly with some good mark vehicle and some support from some infantry. So there's definitely a threat there for May Jones. He should basically just, you know, try and pressure up the flanks and if he get up a T thirty four to veteran C one, he should begin taking some points with it. Otherwise he should just basically try to, you know, not get caught up in a nasty engagement, frontal engagement this with Major Onich. And what could also look here to be one of the chances here of Major Onich winning the game would be that veteran C two pack with target weak point and otherwise, you know, doing more damage. So there's definitely a chance of getting back. Otherwise I think he should focus on getting out a Stug or two and that way basically try and blast the T-34s from a safer distance and also begin blasting the enemy infantry. So, let's return to the fight and see how this actually turns out. Pencil mounted machine gun there going up the Panzer IV, going for the cutoff point here. The Pioneers boldly foraging ahead, but also rather boldly getting punished by the Soviets, resulting in a swift retreat. By the T-34, the workhorse of the Soviet armored forces. Not the most heavily armored workhorse though. And while it had sloped armor, what a lot of people don't understand is that sloped armor only works to a certain extent. If the caliber of the weapon utilized against the sloped armor was too high, the effect of it was simply greatly diminished. And that was one of the things here with the T-34. Same thing, in fact, the Sherman suffered under, but to a much lesser extent due to having thicker frontal armor but also considerably less sloped. So that is something also to remember. Panzer 4 doing what he can, Panzer Fender is moving up. Attack also filing away most merrily. And I really think you should consider getting another squad of Panzer Fender I mean, it's surprising. I mean, he rushed for Panzer Fender so while he's only utilizing two, seems a bit off to me. I would have imagined at least Three squads are going to really deliver some serious munitions into his opponent's gullets. So again, a bit of an oddity there, a bit of an oddity. The T 34s are picking on the move again. And that Panzer IV is not in a good condition. There we go, in fact, you can spot it retreating away. Pack on the other side of things. Need to put. Oh dear, too late there. Nice armor advance there by Ormadon. Major Onich needs to be a lot more careful with his units. I'm starting to suspect he might be getting a bit desperate here, making more mistakes than he probably should be. There you go, just charging ahead. He seems very intent on securing the cutoff points. Perhaps also getting that heavy howitzer. Or heavy mortar. There. I want to feel it's a howitzer, apparently. Not really helping. It looks like the howitzer mortar crew might escape here. The wrath of the Panzer Grenadier. And there you go, T-34's arriving. Needs retreat. Pack flying away here. And misses. Less good, less good. And there we go, all of a sudden in light cover. I mean, again, they actually do some damage. It might not be much, but it's actually some damage. Again, out of the open, they are absolutely terrible. And also, you know, be careful about moving in from the open like this against tanks. That is definitely a bit of a tricky problem you can commit there with the Panzer Grenadiers. Lots of manpower being floated, this is not good. And I'm definitely missing the officer here to boost near my infantry. Again, he could that way gun so much more out of his panzer grenadiers. Another pack cleared out, another one on the way. He could adjust, of course, recruit that one with some more infantry supporting it. More Ostrom arriving, in fact, four squads of us hoping I'd rather some of us unseen to think he was just throwing them in. But the question is, will he be able to properly utilize them? Again, remember, cover matters, cover matters. 
Yeah, he seems a bit reluctant to actually use nice cover with his Osprey, awesome which is obviously hurting him. Nice punk in the middle of the road, and oh, there we go. But at the same time, the losses inflicted on the Panzerist are too heavy, and the remaining survivor is forced to pull away. Sneaky little assault up here. Nice flank here, trying to catch the T-34s of Garp. Doesn't quite fully succeed. At the same time, though, the Panzerist here might have a chance, being veterans of feet and facing some rather depleted infantry. In particular, support by the Ostrov in cover. Pack crew likely going to get killed. Again, Stug, Stug, Stug. Sturm Geschutz. And it looks like he's trying to sort of basically counteract all of the losses he's suffering by just getting a lot of Ostrov and basically just trying that way, grab some of the map. Pack loaded for panzer hunting. There we go. Pack advancing, direct hit there. Pack here needs to turn about, turn about. There we go, defense forcing a caught between the two packs and the Panzer Shreks. That could definitely be a loss here for Omadon. He might have gotten too confident, he might have thought he could get Mayor Jonic. And there we go, two defense force swiftly dealt with. A nice pincer maneuver right there from the packs, completely wiping them out. And Germany is moving up here. Panzerists need to quickly stop off. Need to get off a fun grenade here. Veterans E2. Lovely and a swift retreat then in the face of such unfriendly events. Hacks are need to be ready to support the amount of infantry veterans. The Panzer is moving up. Looks like Major Onich is turning things around. But at the same time, needs to be careful not to extend retreat, retreat, retreat. And sent some of those Ostrom out here on flanking missions. Take away some territory slowly but surely. Instead of handing them around like that. Pioneers here. Hilfsfilliger here. T-34 is going to need to be pulled back. Now he's on the other hand sending his to the Oh! Railway artillery, pull back, pull back, pull back! And at the same time though, trying to catch an infantry force with a railway artillery shot is perhaps not the best usage of the ability. In particular one that's already moving. That's perhaps overestimating the ability's usefulness. Ostrom is simply getting wiped out. The guards' infantry, the conscripts, simply proving too powerful against, you know, rather Ostrom weak infantry. We are losing the sector. Yeah. And another Panzer IV. I can't help but feel this is a bit of a blind Panzer faith. The reaction ends up, you know, actually losing more. Then he actually ends up doing Our with them. Which he can't help but feel is a bit sad. I mean, he's yet to have one veteran C1 Panzer IV. I mean, a well handled Panzer IV is great, but you know, it does require it is well handled. Otherwise, you're better off getting something like the Stug if you can't handle it in such a maneuverable situation. Or get some Ostman if you really want to deal with the infantry. There we go, nice hit from the Panzer IV, blowing up half an Arkhart's infantry squad. Panzer is spearheading things. Time to pop back here to Omadon. We should make a move here for the mortar. Can he get them? Can he get them? With perhaps a bundle grenade, we can fight the Lagnung. Constant flanking up here. Panzer 4 needs to be constantly prepared and again, light machine gun up. Can he get it this time? Can he get it? Can he get it? No. Doesn't know it like it. Bit of a sad situation there. Forty fitter force still being filled up. They all damaged force to pull back. And now we see here that Major Onich has managed to secure himself a nice chance of gaining most of the map. So if he can quickly do this, should be a chance. Should be a chance, and he also needs that Panzer for repaired. Schnell, post haste, in fact, command. even. Supply sector under attack. And we're seeing here that Omadan's otherwise depleted force is slowly getting built up and getting ready for another assault. These Panzers need to be pulled back for healing. 
they could very well risk Gun getting wiped ready. out. Bungay here tending to catch the advancing horde. Gets a few kills, but ultimately not enough to really make any serious impression on the advancing Soviets. Yes, comrade. We are ready. Under fire. These chaps will move out. Panzer 4 moving up. Please be careful though. Careful, careful, careful. Don't want to get too close. And there you go. Panzer is forced to retreat. They're by themselves. Also rather out in the open, in fact. And forced to... Don't, don't. Oh no, Magonic. I think you misclicked right there. There we go, button and Titan grenade, T-34 rolling in. This is a disaster. I sincerely hope that was a misclick. As there was otherwise really no reason to charge that Panzer IV into that situation. The units getting wiped out, nothing to cover up here. The lack of an infantry company is rather hurting because he's lacking some vital support weapons. Make in that sense, quick. of course, also the lack of panthers attacking him, or denying him an opportunity to control the amount of Soviet infantry moving about and uses of this is the punishment. So there we go, counter-attack quickly going in, but will it be enough? Panther Faust here should have been utilized on the T-34 from the Ostwappen. Quickly throwing in the face of danger. Panzer grenade right about here for the weapon changes for Major Onyx Panzer Grenadier. He is moving in. No grenade instead, he's continuing moving them on! There we go though, but he might actually lose them on the retreat now. And T-34 getting blasted. Boldly moving ahead, the pack falls, he's but he also risks them getting wiped out by the guards in the score, which he seems to have forgotten a bit about. And while both sides are actually depleted, clearly see that Orban has the advantage in actually having more veteran forces compared to his opponent, and also more armor. Not sure why he's rushing it. This actually looks like a fresh panzer in his squad. It looks like he finally got a third one. Making a rush for the Panzer Abwehrkanone. But at the same time also setting himself up, getting played for these veterans with 3 guards with 28 kills. And there we go, they pretty much swiftly put those bastards out of their misery. And also note here how Ormodon constantly you know, keeps his T-34s at a safe distance, just bombarding the enemy because you're not risking Panzer Break or Panzer Faust too much anyways. And there we go, another squad of the Osttruppen. Destroyed. I fear these Panzer Grenadiers will not make it home to the fatherland. Or can they escape this volume of Soviet punishment? Looks like they did. Oh no! Just as he thought he was safe, one hit, and now we also notice there's absolutely nothing to stop it anymore. No punch effects, no packs. Seems to be deteriorating completely beyond Major Onyx controls. Major Onyx is controlled now. We are ready to build on that. We are T-34 ready for combat. Yes, comrade. Make it T-34 reporting. A lot of T-34s really putting on a lot of pressure against his German opponent, and five T-34s on the way. Clearly, I mean, Formada knows how to handle his tanks. The territory is in our despite, despite, you know, fights facing off against a large, you know, wall of packs. Put the advancing here. Oh, another frontal assault out in the open. Looks like these gentlemen also have been upgraded. Light machine gun here picked up. We should probably try and grab it. These passengers need to get out of there before they're also wiped out. And another Panzer IV, I would say that's a full Panzer IV platoon that's now been summoned to the field. And of course wiped out piecemeal. Where do you need us? Incoming fire! There 
There we go. Marking the Panzer IV. Increasing the damage done. That's definitely bad news for Majorovich, who seems to be ignorant of the danger next to Russia City. Panzer IV. There we go, T-34 down. A small victory. Mortaran continue to harass the German infantry. Bear 23, 47 kills, of course. Most of those are Ostropen, so certainly easier to achieve kills, but still quite menacing to think about. Lots of Soviet equipment lying around the ground. Another T-34 wrecked, but more are just coming in. The Soviet war machine is in full swing. Tirelessly pumping out more T-34s. Enemy forces are capturing our supplies. But the German force here is completely shattered by now. There's barely anything holding it together. There's what? Two units. Ultimately, things have actually collapsed in the Megonich, despite his best intentions. I'm just going to speed this up because there's nothing really much else to see here. This is pretty much game over. And there we go. An interesting attempt here for Panzer Grenadier Rush. But, I mean, there were some underpinning problems. Partly, you know, he didn't actually take it to the full extent. I mean, if he's going to rush, but he at least gets three squads early on. That was rather one of the parts he failed. You know, he never really got that amount of damage to really, you know, sufficiently put down the jackboot on the Soviet infantry. In that sense, you know, again, I mean, if you're going to rush to something, commit yourself to it, in particular if it involves infantry. And there's also the part, I mean, he ultimately didn't really use his doctrine very well. I mean, the Ostrom, he clearly didn't seem to understand how to utilize and what the strengths were, which again are cover. That was a problem. No officer, no trenches. I don't think he used the conversion ability either, and the only uh, railway artillery could have been utilized better against. I mean, there were some problems. I mean, I suspect he clearly didn't understand how to use the doctrine. And certainly, Ostrom doctrine is a bit more tricky, sort of, to sort of get a grasp on, I suppose, which is fair enough. Also, I think, you know, he was relying a bit too blindly on the Panzer Force. He ultimately never quite, you know, handled them well. I mean, he essentially got outmaneuvered here by Ormodan, who clearly understood mobile armoured warfare much better than his German opponent. And I rather think he should have gone for the Stooks, which clearly, you know, with a better range, better rate of fire, might have also handled a bit better with them. Because he might also have been encouraged to keep them at range, because he had a slight tendency for running his Panzer Force a bit too much. So, I mean, I think there were some problems here for Major Onish in actually how to utilize his Panzer Force, which rather hurt him as well. But, I mean, overall, I mean, he faced a very aggressive Soviet opponent who actually made good use of his tanks. I mean, Major Onish was actually able to deflect him problems. I mean, it's not like Major Onish, again, was a complete idiot. But I think, you know, he was trying something new, and I think he was a bit out of his depths. And again, I mean, if you're going to try a new strategy, that's great. But, you know, sometimes, you know, you might want to put in a bit of research first. And again, if you're going to try some new units like the Osthorpen, again, consider a bit, you know, what are the rules running behind them. In this case, you know, they do a lot less damage than when they're out of cover than when they're in, for example. But again, you know, make full usage of your doctrine. Always do your best to make full usage out of it. Failure to do so can be a rather critical failure. So there you go. Hope you enjoyed this match. Hope you learned a lot from it. If you did, why not subscribe to your friends? If you didn't, well, why not? And we prevent, provide some feedback in the comments. This is Imperial Dane saying cheers.